I just want to come back to something you said relating to the rights of the parties. Uh, and you mentioned the right to be accompanied and assisted by a non-party participant and that yep. mediators should be mindful of of that, alert to that and, and make sure that everyone is aware of and understands the expectations of um, participation by those. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, could you give me some examples of the kind of participation that might come under that um, section? Yeah. Okay, so I suppose, you know, the most obvious um, non-party participants are going to be legal advisors. That would be common enough, particularly in commercial cases, civil and commercial cases. You might also have financial advisors that might participate. Um, but then you can also have scenarios where other non-party participants might be brought. So um, what I've encountered in my mediation practice frequently enough is somebody who just wants to have a friend there with them um, for a little bit of moral support if they're feeling a bit uneasy or a family member. Um, sometimes you might have a union representative if it's an employment related matter. Uh, sometimes you might have um, somebody like a, a maybe uh, somebody else from the organization. If it's a, um, say a school situation, you might have the uh, a teacher, the individual involved and a representative of the board. So it can be somebody professional or it could be somebody who's really just there to give a bit of moral support to one of the parties or both of the parties in mediation. Thank you.